Hello everybody, it's me again, and I'm going to do a video now on using Blender to do a tilt-shift focus effect. Uh, this is probably going to be longer than 10 minutes, so I may have to break it up over to multiple, multiple parts, but whatever. So, let's start with uh, the footage, the source footage. I recorded some shots. Here, I'll actually start from scratch. So, I recorded some shots out my window on my iPhone and uh, starting from here these are the shots so I'm gonna put them onto my media drive so these are just straight out of the iPhone nothing special they come out as uh, mp4 files but they're in a format that um, Blender doesn't really like so I'm gonna first convert them to AVI files using a script that uh, I wrote which basically just calls FFmpeg and so here oops. so I'm translating them into AVI files I'm also making sure that they're uh, 1280 by 720 and um, that the uh, the audio is is good. In this case, we don't really care about the audio. <coughs> All right, the transformation is done. And now what I'm going to do is uh, store the uh, the originals. So I can always go back to them if I need to. Ignore that. Okay, so here are the. Uh, this is what they look like. I found for tilt shift the effect. Generally, what you want is you want the middle band of the, your your shot or the the interesting part of your shot, but the entire horizontal band at that interesting point. You want that to be in focus, and everything above and below to be out of focus. So. For example, um, everything everything I'm covering here, this should be out of focus, and also up here, out of focus. That's if we're going to focus on the middle area here. And the way Tilt Shift works is that um, it simulates a close-up shot. And in a close-up shot, a really, really tight shot, you've got a very narrow depth of field. My my Canon 5D, the depth of field is actually um, in extreme zoom uh, or extreme macro. It's about one millimeter deep. And then everything past that point, either towards or away from the, uh, the actual camera, is out of focus. So if I'm looking at a watch, let's say at a 45 degree angle, the, th the three mark might be in focus and everything else on the watch dial is out of focus. So this is the effect we're kind of looking for. So now I've converted these to APIs, and this is a default API conversion from FFmpeg, which Blender seems to be very compatible with. So now we'll fire up Blender. I'm using the latest version, which is 2.58. And what we need, the first thing we need to do is we need to determine how long the uh, the footage, the the scene is. Unfortunately, in the compositor, you can't really tell. So what I'm going to do is uh, first edit it here in the um, the video editor. So we'll go to the media drive, uh, projects, and we'll take the first one. So there's the footage, and we can scrub it. Um, and it tells you here how long it is. It's 630 frames. So now we switch over to the compositor, and Oh, we need to use nodes, backdrop, and auto render. And we can get rid of the rendering node because we're not going to use that. Add an image. And we're going to load up the same file from the media drive. By the way, if you click this icon here, it switches to a graphical browser, which is nicer. And this is the one we're working on right now. 
and we happen to know, see here it says frames 1. I'm not sure why it doesn't automatically detect the number of frames. That's kind of a, I think that's probably a bug. Certainly a, a flaw in the design. So we go back to video editing, it's uh, 630. Back to compositing, and put 630. There. So now this will take place over the entire animation. Now a very important Oh, if you hit control down arrow you go full screen on this too, which is kind of nice. Now a very important aspect of how the effects work is that they, if you're going to work with um, say a defocus node, so let me, sh let me show you this, so let's go to filter, blur, not defocus, defocus actually requires a render and a, um, and a depth map, but we're, we're going based on video which doesn't have that. <clears throat> so we want a viewer node. The viewer node actually is what will be shown up here in the middle. And there we go, there's our image. Now if we set the blur to say 20 and 20, there we've got a blurred image. And we probably want Gaussian as well. See the, the blurring looks like very squarish. Switch to Gaussian and it's much much more like a natural blur. Now, we don't want everything blurred, we just want some of the image blurred. One way to do this, you can use an image, and I'm going to go I've created an image here, basically just um, a dark to light and dark again image Now, the one thing we have to make sure is that the the, the size of the effect and the size of the source are the same. So I'm going to add a distorter scale, and we're going to, based on the render size, oh, we don't want the alpha here. We want this, and then this. Now, this has kind of given us the opposite effect. You note that the middle area is out of focus and the two top and bottom are in focus. That's because the way this works, the white area represents 1, the black area represents 0. 1 is full effect, 0 is no effect, and since the effect we're talking about is blurring, 1 full effect is in blurring in the middle. And what we want is the opposite. So what we're going to do is get at another color node, an inverter, Let it composite, and there we go. We have blurring in the middle, or sorry, clear in the middle. And now we have sort of that effect of um, tilt shift. You know, it looks like a, a miniature. And ni another nice thing about the way Blender works, you can add out output viewer nodes wherever you want, and you just click between them. And it's kind of like layers in Photoshop. So I click on this one. That's the, that's the effect, and here's the original. So we, it's easy to toggle back and forth between them and see. And Blender will cache the nodes, unless you check this down here, free unused. Uh, free unused you'd use during an animation render. You, you don't use it while you're, you're building up your node tree like this, because when, whenever you make a change it has to render and, and, and then it caches it, and that saves you a lot of time. It uses memory, but it saves a lot of time. So we can, we can shrink these guys down here. So, there's your tilt shift. Now there's um, another way, another feature. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to call it there because that's uh, that's enough for now.